Hi everyone, Fujit here, and we're continuing our journey down the worst performing tanks in the tiers. We are at tier 9, we did the VAT chat 25 TAP yesterday, and we're finally here. The Leo PTA, the worst performing tier 9 medium tank in the game. A tank that absolutely everybody, with the exception of all the pro players and the super duper unicoms, struggle with. Uh, we can see that just by looking at Blitzstars. So Blitzstars has this tank with the most battles, 712, and the worst win rate, shy of 47%. It's actually sitting at 46.98%. That is worse than every other medium tank in the tier. It has a survival rate of only 25%. And it has a DPM a damage per battle of 1,171 with 0 0.59 kills. So what is it about this tank that everybody struggles with? Well, there's actually quite a lot that everybody struggles with. One of the big things is this tank is notoriously difficult to play stock. It, it's terrible. Now, I'm going to show you a replay because on the stream, I purposely played a few games stock. And just to highlight how terrible this tank actually is. So that's number one. When you're driving through these tiers and you're grinding up, playing stock tanks, well, it has to be done. And when you get to this tank, oh, it's just painful. Especially because the tank before this is actually very nice. And it's not too bad so it, you, you jump into this thing and all of a sudden you've got no armor you need a stock which means you've got a terrible gun terrible mobility terrible engine terrible everything and a lot of people come unstuck with that and the idea being is to grind it out as soon as possible or to throw free xp at it now that's not to say that playing this tank stock means you're never going to win any games it just means if you're not overly skilled in the tank and you're not overly experienced, you're just gonna have a terrible time. Don't get me wrong, I mean, playing the stock tanks is, is actually quite good for your gameplay because it irons out some of those horrible sort of things that you creep into your game when you're fully equipped. So I, I, I never say around to people and say, don't play the tank stock. You know, at least play a few games stock because you're playing the tank with literally all its weaknesses unleashed. And that will give you a pretty good idea about how to play it when you've got it up to speed. But the, the main problem with this tank is that everybody, realistically, apart from, as I, as I said, the pros and the unicorns, play this thing incorrectly. They stick it in the wrong place. Uh, they, they rush around and they do things that this tank is not designed to do. It will get you into trouble far quicker than it will get you out of trouble. And one of the problems with that, we'll get to. So yeah, playing this tank stock is one of the biggest problems of this tank. So let's jump into its overall parameters. And as you can see, hit point wise, it's got 1,749. That ain't that bad. Armor, well, it hasn't got any. 52, 60 and 60 on the turret, front sides and rear. And the hull, 70, 35, and 25. I mean, this thing is just paper thin. It is an HE magnet. And any well-timed HE round coming from a player who's got half a brain is really going to hurt you. Chance of engine fire is 10%. So you need to start thinking about how you're going to load your provisions and everything up. View range, not bad. Don't forget, I've got optics on this. So that's increasing the view range to almost 300 meters. Camouflage, not bad. When stationary, 50%. When moving, 43 When firing, only 10 Now, the DPM on this thing is beautiful. 2,792. Reload time is 7.52 seconds. These are nice parameters. Penetration, well, don't forget, I'm on the top gun here. So it's 268 for the APCR, which is its standard ammunition for the tier 10 gun. Heat is its premium ammunition. That's 330 and... HE is 58. Now when I drop that down to the the, the, the other gun, the tier 8, because there is no tier 9 gun for this tank, you can see 
those penetrations start coming down and this is where you start getting the problem when you play it stock. The armor piercing is only 223, the APCR, which is now the premium ammunition, is 272, and the HG is only 50. And then your damage comes down uh, quite significantly for your AP, it's only 225, your APCR 110, if your HG 270. With the top gun, you're dishing out 350 with your APCR, you're dishing out 300 with your heat, and 400 with your HE. And this is generally where a lot of players struggle with. They're playing with that tier eight gun. It is an absolute nightmare. And as you can see here, as I said, there's no tier nine gun. There's a tier eight gun and a tier 10 gun. There's a tier eight turret and a tier nine turret. There's a tier nine engine and a tier 10 engine. And there's a tier eight tracks and a tier nine tracks. So this is like a mixed bag. And when you are fully stock, oh, it, the, the, all the parameters of the tank come down. I mean, it just does. Anyway, gun depression, well, you've only got six degrees on this thing. However, you've got pretty nice aiming time, 3.4 seconds, and pretty decent dispersion, 0 0.303. These aren't bad. Top speed, well, when you've got everything, uh, all the top stuff loaded, you're going 65 forwards, 23 backwards with an average of 39. And its terrain crossing ability is not too bad. However, if I now switch everything to a stock PTA, you will start to see big differences in where the player base struggles. So we've already looked at the gun. Now let's have a look at that turret. Your hit points come down. Your armor stays the same, but your hit points come down. If I stick the engine in, well, everything changes. Your engine power decreases, your chance of fire increases, your speed stays the same forwards and backwards, but your average speed comes down, uh, your power to weight ratio comes down, and the whole turn comes down. But then stick in the stock tracks, the terrain crossing ability and everything also comes down. And this is the problem when you play this tank stock. So let's jump in and see what equipment loadout I've got. Now, I'm not saying that my equipment loadout is the best. It works for me, it may not work for you. You need to sort of tinker with your loadouts to suit your gameplay. First and foremost, I have got calibrated shell. I think the DPM is good enough on the tank for me not to run a rammer, and I want that additional penetration because it will face tier 10s. I'm then running the defense system because you can be susceptible to module damage on this thing, so just reduce your chances of that happening. I've then got the improved optics. Why? Well, it's realistically a light medium more than a pure medium. So I want that view range, I want to get those spots in quickly. Then running an enhanced gun laying device, I want to be able to get that aim and reticle and that aim time down massively. I could run a supercharge, but again, I don't think I really need it. I've then got the improved assembly, that only gives me 99 hit points. I mean, I could run for the 4% of hull and turret armor with the enhancement, but again, this thing is so paper thin, it doesn't really give me anything. That's why I'm running it with the additional HP. I'm then running the engine accelerator because I, I want some mobility. Yes, I could do the improved control. It gives me a good haul turn rate, but I think my haul turn rate is already good enough. And with the engine accelerator, it also, it already gives me some haul turn rate. And then running again, the vertical stab, bringing that aim time down further. I could use a refined gun to lower that dispersion, but the dispersion on the tank isn't that bad, in my opinion. Toolbox, I hand consumables what I normally use. Switching over to the consumables, Wargaming have been tinkering these with these recently. At the moment, I'm running with the reticle calibration. The reason being is because I found that one of these strange quirks with both the Leo 1 and the PTA is that it doesn't seem as accurate as it used to be. The reticle calibration therefore gives me that accuracy. It gives me that, you know, peace of mind that there is some accuracy still left in the gun. I know it's only in my mind, it's psychological, the gun is still accurate, but I just want that, you know, peace of mind. That's why I'm running that at the moment. I've then got the multi-restoration restore pack, because why not? And then I've got the adrenaline, just in case. Now I could run the speed boost, I could run two tracks, but I'm trying it out at the moment with the reticle calibration. Moving over to provisions, well again, Wargaming have added a few things here. At the moment I'm running the chocolate because I want my crew to be at its best. I'm also running the protective kit because I need protection. 
as I said, you know, modular damage on this thing is pretty, pretty high. So if I had run this, it reduces that. And I normally run it with the improved fuel, but I'm, I'm running it at the moment with the improved gunpowder, just giving it a go. It adds 35% to the shell velocity. Now the Leo PTA top gun has pretty decent shell velocity, but I'm giving it a bash. Like I said, I would normally have the improved speed, uh, the improved fuel gives me some additional mobility, but at the moment, I'm just running it with that. My my ammunition loadout, well, for the Top Gun, I've got 35 APCR, 15 heat, and 8 HE. That's just what I run. So, like I said, there's nothing saying that you have to run the same. It's just what I run, and it works for me. Anyway, let's switch over and have a look at this armor because that is quite a big thing on this tank. Here we go with the PTA's armor. This is it facing off an E75, and as you can see, it is pretty wide open. And this is the problem with the Leo PTA. Its armor profile is pretty bad. It's a fast, fast medium tank. And you've got to sacrifice something to get that speed, and the sacrifice is your armor simple as that now this should be telling you something automatically and it should be telling you that when you've got a light skin tank like the pta you can't just sit it out in the open because you are going to get punished like the bat chat that we saw yesterday this tank is all about mobility and with the accuracy of the gun it's about being mobile and jumping from spot to spot to try and farm damage that's the thing I mean, I could go into intricate details about the, about this tank. I mean, can it side scrape? No. Is it good haul down? No. Um, so what's going for it armor-wise? Nothing. You are going to pen this from everywhere. So that's the main thing. Let's jump into a couple of games anyway. And let's see some ways to play the PTA, I guess. So in this first replay, I'm playing the tank fully stock. Okay, I've got the stock gun, the stock tracks, the stock turret, and the stock engine. So this is fully stock. Now, if you don't believe me, jump onto the stream when I played this, and you'll see that I load it fully stock. I'm playing this replay because I want to show you that you can play the tank stock and still have a good time. Okay, I got quite lucky here. This is a tier 9, tier 8 game. We are not facing those tier 10s, which was a blessing in disguise. That doesn't mean to say that we're going to get an easy time, however the tank is still very difficult to play. A couple of things that you're sacrificing. Firstly, your accuracy. It's not as accurate stock, as you can see here. The gun's a little bit wayward, and you've really got to wait for that reticle to come down, and you can see it's very bouncy. Now, I do wait for the reticle. Where's it go? Don't know. So you just have to be very, very mindful of this, because this is when you're playing with literally every single weakness. It still has no armor. And now it's got bad penetration, bad alpha damage, pretty not the best accuracy, and you lose all your mobility. So playing in stock is really, really difficult. And I would recommend nobody really does what I'm doing here, which is purposely play this Leo PTA stock. As I said, it's you know, I, I recommend people to play a couple of games in its stock, get used to the tank, because once you know what its overall weaknesses are then believe me when you when you get it up to the top equipment you will play this tank a lot better but when you are stock you've got to be very mindful of the fact that it's a very difficult tank to play it's not impossible it's just incredibly difficult now we've knocked out 754 damage here which is pretty bad so far and we've taken one kill We've lost a little bit of hit points, but we're okay. And as you can see, this mobility is just struggling. It just doesn't want to get round the map as quickly as it is when you fully upgraded it. As I say though, you can still play this tank stock. You've just got to be very, very careful. You've got to protect your hit points and protect your tank. And you've got to take the shots when you can take them. And as you can see, we're now up to 1400 damage. Now I'm quite happy with this game because it's a stock PTA. And we're facing off against some big tanks there, the IS-8, the E-75, and we're doing okay. I mean, those are two tier 10s. There's the Progetto 46, and again, I'm not gonna take the shot because the gun is not as accurate as I would like it to be when it's only the tier eight. But 1600 damage, we probably end up on 1700 damage 
in a fully stocked PTA, we've kept most of our hit points. I'm particularly happy with that. Finish off the Star Chaser. There you go, 1700 damage, two kills. I'm happy with that game. But that goes to show you why this tank is so difficult when it is stock. It is not an easy tank to play, guys. So play a couple of games in it and get used to its weaknesses, understand the parameters of the tank. Then, as soon as you can, get that gun, get that turret. As you see there, we lose credits as well. But, you know, with second highest damage, I'm happy with that game. It could have been a lot worse. I just wanted to show you that one to show you that the tank is playable stock. It's not all doom and gloom. Now we're fully upgraded. We've got the tier 10 gun. We've got the, the, the top tracks, the top turret and the top engine. So we're in a bit of a better position. We're no longer stock. We're on Middleburg. We're going to push up to where the sea cap would normally be, hoping that they're going to be there. They're not. Well, two of them are. And it's their two light tanks, their T-49 and their T-92. Now we sat here thinking, do we push them? Do we push them? And we think, sod it yeah let's push them because they're pretty isolated to be honest with you so i'm going to come around the corner there is the t49 now he doesn't hit me with hash which is what he should be doing he hits me with heat why well don't know really if he would have hit me with hash i would have been in a bad position to be perfectly honest with you and then the amx 5100 takes him down we're going to take a pretty defensive position here. We can see that uh, we've both lost tanks. They've lost two, we've lost one, we lost the Conway. And we're thinking, where do we push on this one? And I'm thinking, well, I'm going to go down to sort of their flank. So I'm going to use the mobility of the PTA to move around the map a little bit. And then I see that cap in the base. So I'm looking at the mini map and I'm thinking, oh, actually, there's nobody on their flank. So let's go down the middle area if we can. Probably gives, oh, and there's a Hori. He sat at the back, load up the premium ammunition because we can't pin him frontally. Get a nice shot into the side. Can we make him stick his head down a bit more? Let's put a blind shot in. I don't think it's hitting, well, it might hit him, I don't know. Anyway, I can see that my long suffering two mate, Ephelub, is pushing down. So let's go and help him out. Let's put, try and get another one into the Hori. Yes, we do. Give him a hard time here, farming a little bit of damage. We're out in the open, but we're not spotted just yet. Look how bouncy this gun is, it's so annoying. And that one misses completely. So we're gonna forget the Hori for the moment. He's, uh, well, he's just doing what it is. They're on 60 base points. So we wanna get round here and we wanna reset that cap if we can. It's an Emil 2. So we can take one from him, put one into his bottom plate, reset the cap, and we do. That's quite nice, we're happy with that. Now we can probably use our ability to get round him a little bit, but then I guess, track him out there then he gets stuck a little bit he turns his turret not to worry i've got some support in the action x now the mobility his turret turn is not as good as my mobility and i'm just going to be able to take him down and farm him out we're already at over 2300 damage so we're quite happy with that we take one kill we do 2300 damage and that is why the pta is much better when it's not stock because you're just going to have a much better time now I leave this one for my own mate, doesn't matter anyway. We end the game on 2,371, we do one kill and we have a good time. But the main thing there is you've got to be mobile with the PTA. You can't afford to stick this tank, you know, in the line of fire or in harm's way. Every man and his dog will pen you and you're just going to have a bad time. The other problem with the PTA, I did fire a couple of rounds of heat there. But another problem with the PTA, it really isn't the best credit maker, to be perfectly honest with you. It's not a bad tank, and you can start to see why people are struggling in it. I mean, the thing about the PTA is that it's preparing you for the Leo 1 and the type of gameplay you should be looking to play in Tier 10. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the PTA is an easy tank. It's not. But then again, the Leo 1 is not an easy tank. And you can see here this TVP, this is a tier 10 game, this TVP from uh, TXC Clan, who, uh, who recognized me to begin with, is giving me a bit of a hard time. And look how many hit points you lose. I mean, you just lose so many hit points. Not to worry, like if you think with the PTA, you've got to turn around and run away. And you've got to try and get your tank into a place that is going to be good for you and your tank. Because it has got pretty decent gun it's pretty accurate it's got good mobility it's got lots of things going for it and like i say in virtually all these videos look at the weaknesses of the tank first 
play to those weaknesses. Okay, and once you play to the weaknesses, then you can play to the strengths. And we're gonna give this Kranwagen a hard time. And that is the thing, that is the trick with tanks like the PTA and, and technically difficult tanks like this. Once you understand the weaknesses, then you can basically exploit the strengths. The other thing you must know, and it's absolutely crucial, and I know I keep saying this, you need to know the maps because you need to know where to stick your tank and where to get the most out of your tank. There's no point rolling out in tanks that are technically difficult like the PTA when you don't know the maps because you don't know where you're going to be able to put your tank to cause, you know, to, to get the most out of it. So you've got to be very, very mindful of that, guys. Once you know the maps, once you know its weaknesses, you really can exploit the strengths of this tank. I mean, in this game here, we lost a shed load of it points to begin with, and now we brought it back. I mean, we, we, we were up to 1,800 damage. We actually finished this game on just shy of 3,000. We do lose, however, mainly because our tanks in the middle area sort of got wiped out. But I'm trying to highlight to you here why the PTA is a good tank, but what you need to do to play it, especially if you're a newer player. I mean, we effectively farmed that little Kranwagen there. Now, the thing is, I like the PTA. It's a very nice tank, but it is technically difficult. It is one of those tanks that does require skill to play well. That's not to say I think I've got skills, but if you, you know, I've got some experience and experience does count for a bit. Now, you saw in the replays there, my teammate is having much more fun in the PTA than me. He can farm damage better than me, but he's a pro player. And this is the thing. Remember, this thing cannot be sat in the open because every single person will pen you. And if you're up against very good or knowledgeable or experienced players, they're just going to load HE and wipe you out. Stay mobile. Take the shots, relocate, relocate, relocate. That is what you need to remember when playing this tank. It has mobility for a reason. It has a good gun for a reason. And it has no armor. So remember that. And always, always make sure that you've got somewhere of safety. Make sure you've got that safe place to retreat to or hide behind. Because the last thing you need is to be exposed. If you push too heavily in this thing, you're gonna get hurt. If you try to brawl in this thing, you're gonna get wrecked. And therein lies the majority of the problems that you see with the Leo PTA. So many new players jump into a PTA and then think, oh, you know, I'm in a PTA, I've seen these big damage games, you know, 8,000 damage games on, on YouTube, I can do the same thing. And they suddenly discover that they can't, that it's not that easy. The PTA is incredibly difficult. Do not kid yourselves. So anyway, that has been my take on the PTA. Apparently, according to Blitzstars, the worst performing tier nine medium. And you can kind of understand why. But once you get used to its little nuances, it's actually quite a nice tank. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That's been the Leo PTA. By all means, comment in everything below. Share your thoughts. Tell me what you think. And until the next time, guys, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because that is what it's all about. Having fun being happy.